The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. College football is almost back, so we're going to have to dive into it. We're going to have to look at each conference, breaking them down, giving a preview of each conference, and seeing what is at hand for this season in college football. First, we are going to start off with the Big 12 Conference, a very interesting conference to say the least. Whenever we look at the Big 12, there's a lot of good things happening for it, and A lot of fun news coming out of the Big 12 this year. We're going to start off with the Big 12 today on this Saturday Saturday special of Rising to the Occasion. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Rising to the Occasion, another Saturday special. We're pre-recording this episode, so we're actually not completely live to you right now uh, just because of some other things going on in the works, but we're very excited to bring you another Saturday special and talk a little bit about the Big 12, a Big 12 preview. Like I said, I think the, the Big 12 is very interesting when we look at it as a whole this year and seeing everything that it has. Uh, it's just interesting to think that, you know, with... Texas and Oklahoma leaving the Big 12. I think that's very interesting and in seeing what's going to happen with their last year there. Are they going to take over for the for the last time or is somebody else going to try to be that front runner and run them out of town with maybe a, a, a loss in a Big 12 championship game or not allow them there at all? Uh, we're going to see a lot of battling going on in the Big 12. But before we do, let's mention our first sponsor today and that is SeatGeek. SeatGeek is an amazing way to get your tickets Go check out SeatGeek.com. That's S-E-A-T-G-E-E-K.com, just like it sounds, SeatGeek. And you can use code R2TO for $20 off. All right, so go over there and check it out. The reason why I love SeatGeek so so much is that it's very easy to find where you want to sit in the stadium. You can also use their color coding system to find a great deal because they've got a red for not so great deal, a yellow for maybe a little better deal, Uh, or just an average deal, and then you've got green for whenever it's a truly good deal. So go check it out, SeatGeek.com, or download the app, and you can use the app. But you make sure to use code R2TO for $20 off. SeatGeek is an amazing way to find all of your tickets for whatever game you're going to. We're talking about the Big 12 today. Maybe you want to go to a Big 12 game. Then you need to check out SeatGeek.com or use the SeatGeek app because that is the best way to find your tickets. Maybe you want to go to a concert. I don't know what kind of music you like, but whatever concert is near you, maybe you want to go check it out. You can also use SeatGeek for that for any kind of event. So go check it out. You can get your tickets. Your first, your first, For your first ticket purchase, you can get $20 off. All right, so we're giving you a a huge deal here just by using code R2TO. Again, use SeatGeek for all of your ticket ticket, uh, purchases, and you can use them and get $20 off. But guys, let's go ahead and bring in, first bring in both my co-hosts. I've got Jeremy here in studio. Uh, Jeremy, how are we doing today, man? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I'm really excited for this upcoming weekend. I know i got a lot planned. Then overall, like, I'm getting ready, looking forward to everything, then... Just ready to talk about the Big 12, and then I know, as you mentioned in the pre-episode, it's really going to be undetermined right now with in the Big 12 of all the four teams that are coming in now. So I think it's going to be a fun addition to having four new teams in the Big 12, but overall I'm just looking forward to it, and I'm really excited for it. Yeah, and then we've got from Mobile, Alabama, we've got our other co-host who is now officially a boy dad. We congratulated you on Monday, but let's give you a, a new congratulations. Blake, how you doing, man? appreciate that fellas um i it's it's been a it's been a long week uh <laughs> it has been in and out of the hospital we thought we were going home we had to go back uh, it's been all over the place and uh it's it's been fun though i can say that it's been fun um it, it's nights and days are mixed up right now you know i've been through the process once i have a 5 year old daughter so i know how that goes but uh, i am I'm just absolutely exhausted right now, but I'm glad to be here though, because college football is right around the corner and the new look big 12, uh, you know, Oklahoma and Texas come into the sec next year. Who's going to take a hold of this conference. 
Uh, you know, TCU kind of put their their fingerprint on it last year and said, "Hey, we're here to we're here to uh, take the reins from from Texas and Oklahoma." So uh, I'm excited for it, man. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the reason why I wanted to start with the Big Twelve is, like I said, I think it's one of the most interesting conferences when we really look at it. So, guys, let's break this down. Let's take a look at the Big Twelve and just jump right into it. First, let's start off with the two teams that are leaving. We're going to start with Texas. Uh, looking at Texas in the last few years, even just the last few coaches, towards the end of the Mac Brown era, it just looked like they were going downhill. I mean, they were. It didn't look like it. They were. They were dis, dis, just completely self-destructing. And we saw them fall apart. Mac Brown leaves. Uh, let's see. They got Charlie Strong in, I think, was the first one, if I remember correctly. That didn't work out too well. They thought Charlie Strong could get, could get them going. I really felt like there was just some resources that were being held back with Charlie Strong personally. But then to look on, they had Tom Herman come in and now on to, uh, to uh, Steve Sarkeesian, which a lot of people feel like Steve Sarkeesian is the answer for Texas. We look at what they were able to do last year. Bijan Robinson was an animal. They were able to, to just crawl on his shoulders and let him take them as far as they did last year. But they still didn't, mm-hmm. didn't finish the season with a good taste in their mouth because they didn't make it to a Big 12 championship game and they didn't reach 10 wins yet. And so we're looking at Texas right now. They don't have B. John Robinson anymore. He's going to be playing on Sundays in Atlanta. And now we look over at them and, and, you know, we've got Quinn Ewers, but Quinn Ewers really didn't show up the way that we thought that that he would uh, last year. He didn't really put up these amazing numbers or anything. I think he still looks really good, just not as good as the hype maybe around him personally i don't think he he really looked as good but we've got quinn ewers uh he's going to be uh, i guess a red shirt sophomore this year uh so the way that that works out so looking looking at, at quinn ewers uh as the the starting qb uh this this depth chart that i'm looking at was updated on june 11th so just last month and it even has Arch Manning listed as a third string, which I think is probably set up that way because they are hoping that he can redshirt. But looking at, at that, I also think that if something were to happen to Quinn Ewers where maybe he really screwed up, I think Arch Manning could take over and, and, and start to be their starting quarterback year one just because I think that they have a lot of faith in him. They think that, that he's going to be able to do a lot of great things. But also looking at the rest of their offense, so of course they don't have uh, Bijan Robinson, but they still have Jonathan Brooks. He's uh, going to be stepping in for uh, for uh, the running back position. And then looking around on top of that, they still have Xavier Worthy, who was outstanding last year, and they still have uh, Jordan Whittington, who was another wide receiver that I think – uh, he, he didn't have as much of a performance, mainly because they could just heave it up to Xavier Worthy nonstop last year. But they also get a transfer in out of uh, Ad- uh, Adonai Mitchell. So they've got three wide receivers there. Looking at Texas, is Texas for real? So I mean, I'm, I'm mainly just going through this because I'm, I'm trying to you know, show that they really don't have too much of a different, different in, uh, look on their team. Uh, on defense, the, the only switch-ups that we see is in the... the safety position they've got a new safety who transferred in uh, in Jalen uh, Catalan and then they've also got Gavin Holmes in at a, as a cornerback and then they also have a new linebacker in Anthony Jun- uh, Anthony Hill Jr. so uh, he's actually a freshman so looking at their their defense not a whole lot different there they've got three big pieces that are coming in to help out um, but then again on their offense I think their offense is going to look a lot different because of the running back position but Blake we'll start off with you is Texas back for you know are they are they back to where they need to be are they going to be able to go out on a good note going into the SEC I think all the signs are pointing to Texas uh, winning the Big 12 this year um, you know it, it's a lot of people say Steve Sarkeesian's got to put up like this is the year all right you know he lost a what he lost to Kansas his first year he come back his set his second year had Alabama on the ropes last year let that slip away uh, so a lot of people are, are you know sitting here saying hey this is the year you've got all these returning starters uh, how many how many returning starters are they bringing back 15 uh, what yeah, is 15. it 15. Like? 15 total. Yeah, 15. That's okay, a lot. all right. If you got 15, yeah, you got 15 returning starters coming back. I right. I look around the Big 12 
And I think this is the year that you got to get it done. Mm -hmm. uh, your your offensive line's coming back. Your quarterback's coming back. Your receivers are coming back. You get A.D. Mitchell uh, coming in there. That's a big-time playmaker. I, I just uh, – yeah, I, with Oklahoma being somewhat a question mark, uh, you know, the TCU losing Max Duggins and, and everything that they lost uh, to the draft and – you know, you kind of look around the Big 12 and say, well, who who else who else can compete? You know, you got Kansas State. They were there last year, but uh, Deuce Vaughn's no longer there. So, uh, you know, I, I, you got to point all fingers to Texas and say, hey, Sark, this is, you know, this is the year because you want a little momentum going into the Southeastern Conference, right? Yeah. Like, if you can't if you can't win the Big 12, what is what is you know, what's your energy like going to the SEC? Because people, if you can't win the Big 12, people in the SEC are going to sit here and go, <laughs> boy, uh, I hate to tell you, but if you can't win the Big 12, you you ain't winning this this conference. So yeah. uh, you don't, you don't want to get laughed off the podium. So uh, I, think, I think this is a, a big year for Sark. Uh, I think this is a year where they can get to 10 wins. Quinn Ewers has to stay healthy, though. Um, you got, you got to stay healthy. Got to protect him, uh, and uh, and in some clutch situations, you know, I want to see him uh, cut back on throwing the ball to the other team. So there's a lot of buzz. I'm, I'm with, high on Texas. Yeah, there's a lot of buzz with what Malik is, Murphy too. So if something weren't to work out yeah. with Quinn Ewers, I think uh, looking over at Malik Murphy, I think that uh, Texas is is pretty happy with being able to lean on him if they need to. Uh, like I said, I I personally see Arch Manning stepping in if something were to happen to Quinn Ewers and he was out for a long time. Um, but looking at it, I think their their goal is that Arch Manning steps in when they start in the SEC. I, I think so, too. I'm just not high on Arch Manning. I'm not either. I, 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 think, I think his name gets them a lot of, of the exposure and the hype. And uh, I just watch – I watched him a couple of his games in high school, man, and, and I'm saying, look, if, if his last name's not Manning, he's probably a three-star. I, I just – I don't know. I got that vibe. Like, I watched him in the spring game, and the, the throws just weren't there. It was like the footwork in the pocket was a little it was a little skittish, and, and it was like he was scared to step into some throws and – and and I look, I know it's a jump from high school to college, but you're supposed to be one of the greatest, you know, uh, recruits and, and prospects that we've ever seen, right? Like, uh, so I don't know. I, Arch is still a question mark. Maybe he learns a lot uh, sitting behind Quinn this year, and and he's ready to take over next year. But I've always had this weird feeling that the thing to Texas wasn't going to work out. And he was gonna transfer in the middle of the night to Ole Miss, but yeah, I don't know. That's just a that's just a weird feeling I've always had. I I, I was I was always kind of feeling like between Ole Miss uh, and possibly Tennessee, I guess, just because again you've yeah. got ties there. But I figured somewhere in the SEC is where he's gonna stay. I don't feel like he's gonna leave SEC country. Mm -hmm. I think that's the only reason uh, why Texas was in the mix because they were going to the SEC. But uh, yeah. I guess Jeremy, you've been quiet over there. What's what's it looking like for Texas this year? Are they are they back? With having fifteen starters, fifteen returning starters, they have to. Otherwise, as Blake mentioned, he said the best. If you're not going to be on top of the Big Twelve, you're going to be you're going to be looking like a fool out there, honestly. And on the offensive side, obviously having return of having Quinn Sellers, he's going to be like he normally is, be clutch. And even looking on the defensive side, I know they just got a four-star recruit. Um, I actually haven't pulled up just because I was going to butcher it. Um, it's a four-star four recruit, DeAndre Robinson at 6'4", 305. He had 62 total offers, and his final four he had was dumbed down to Texas, Florida, Alabama, Georgia, and Ohio State. Then at mm. the overall, obviously, having the outcome of picking Texas with that, that's going to be – that's going to be fun. They were expecting him to come right out of the gate and, and show up and play. So looking on the defensive side of the ball, that's really going to be exciting. I know he was really hype, and 
I listened to a little bit of his press conference, and he was just flat out like he's just ready to get to work. Then he just wants to show his talent and just show what he can truly overall do on the defensive side of the ball, which and looking at that aspect, that's going to be a big thing for Texas and being strong on both sides of the ball, but on the defensive side, it's definitely going to be huge to get to the quarterback and make sure he's out of the pocket or make sure he's under pressure. Then just little itty-bitty things, whether you're rushing all 11, 11 people or if it's just one in particular person, just bull rushing and just getting into him. But overall, it's going to be fun. Yeah, and, and I agree with what Blake said. I think this year is really big, and I th- I'm, I'll, I'll say the same thing for Oklahoma, though I don't want to talk on them yet. We're going to talk on them uh, here next. But looking at Oklahoma and Texas both leaving the Big 12, you really want to leave your footprint on the Big 12 and leave with a win. And I feel like best-case scenario for both of those programs, regardless of, of who wins, is both of them making it to the Big 12 championship just to kiss the Big 12 goodbye mm-hmm. and kind of leave it nice and bitter for the Big 12 that, man, we don't get a second chance. So I think that's really big. And I also think it's really big, not just for the, the, the programs, but I also think it's very big for moving into the Big 12. You need to have that, that, dominant, you know, that dominant first step into the, into the SEC. And so I think both mm-hmm. teams, looking at, looking at both teams, they both need to walk away with a 10-win season at the very least. And even at that, uh, for, for Oklahoma, I feel like a 10-win season still isn't enough to really be confident on just because I don't feel like Oklahoma's schedule is very tough this year. I think Oklahoma's schedule, they should have a 10-win season easy, but it's just because there's such a question mark there with Oklahoma. Whereas on on Texas's note, I think going in with a 10-win season, at least you can feel confident with that. If you can go on a 10-win and winning the Big 12, you can feel even more confident going into the SEC. But you you really want to, to have your first step in the SEC saying, Hey, we're the new dogs in town. Let's let's join the party. Uh, you don't want to be stepping in there saying, "Yeah, I mean, we we competed in the Big Twelve. You want to come in there saying, "Hey, no, we were the top dogs in the Big Twelve. We're coming to join the rest of you guys as you know maybe the maybe the the, the top half of the SEC." Because I feel like as long as you stay in that top half of the SEC, you're doing all right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's that's. I mean, I guess you guys have anything else on Texas? No, I, I just think that that all signs point to them uh, and Sark having to have a good year this year. This year's got to be the year, man. So yeah, a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure. So got to yeah. deliver. And, and question of the day, too, we're, we're trying to do this just to kind of get you guys get, get some sort of comment down below. So comment down below, do you think that uh, Texas is back? Do you think Texas is the team uh, that they want to be to be able to come back into uh, to the, the – the, good era again you know kind of redo this and get back into the where they want to be is texas back we want to hear from you guys so make sure to comment down below josh let me ask you this what does texas do if they go out here this year and they go eight and four again does does the seat of sarkeesian does it i mean is it on broil because it's it's gotta it's gotta start to get hot because yeah. here's here's where Oklahoma and Texas are kind of in the same boat here, uh, and I think Texas even more so just because it's not Sark's second year. Uh, second, he's on yeah. his third season now, right? This could be his third. Yeah. So so with, with Sark going in on his third season, it's it's already kind of warm, you know, not where you could probably still put mm-hmm. your your hand on it and be like, ooh, kind of like sitting in the car seat and you know, on a leather seat in a hot summer summer day. You can sit there, but. It kind of kind of burns a little, but it's only that way just because, man, we're Texas. We need to get back, and it's yeah. not getting any hotter because we're going to the end of the SEC, and we really can't be going out here and shopping for a coach coming into the SEC. Uh, now, for for uh, I think for Brent Venables, it's it's not even hot yet because that was your first year. We'll see what you do this year. You have a very easy schedule, so you should be coming away with eight plus wins. If you're not, your seat is very hot. Uh, if you go away with just 10 wins, your seat's still pretty cool. We'll, 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 I mean, 10 wins is pretty, you know, you can be happy with 10 wins. You can't be upset with 10 wins. No. Uh, if it's if it's eight or less, you're getting a little warm just because you're going into the SEC. We need to see something big, you know, a big splash in the SEC. Yeah. And you have a gauntlet. You have a gauntlet of a schedule. 
in yeah. year one when you I, go to the SEC. I think I, Oklahoma's Oklahoma got, the harder, got shafted. Yeah, yeah, they've got the harder it, harder schedule personally. Uh, I know we, we had our, <laughs> our Saturday special a few weeks back, I guess close to a month back or something like that with Jay Smith. And Jay really liked the schedule looking at it, and he broke it down. I like his explanation a lot, um, but I don't agree with him. I still think that Oklahoma's got a tough schedule going into the SEC that first year, going to Auburn. Uh, that That's a question mark, I suppose, just because we don't really know what Auburn is yet. We don't really know what their identity is. I have a feeling like you guys got the right guy. I have a feeling like you guys got the guy that's going to turn it around in a, in a snap. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at Auburn thinking that this is going to be a really good year. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's just going to be a solid year. Um, but then next year, I think you're going to start to see things really turn personally. Uh, so going to Auburn right in the, the year where I think things are really turning around, not 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 a, a great thing to, to be looking at. Uh, and then, you know, looking at, at the rest of the schedule, too, I think we have Alabama on there. Uh, and then uh, I feel like I feel like we had another really tough one. I think we might go to Tennessee, if I remember right. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, yeah. there was just, there, it was a, a tough schedule going in. So, yeah, I, I think you have to walk away with 10 wins. Nine wins, you're feeling like right in the middle of the two. Maybe, maybe nine is just where it's like, ooh, let's, let's kick this up a notch. But, guys, let's jump over to Oklahoma since we're talking about them a little bit. Uh, and, and I guess I'll, I'll answer the question. I do think Texas has, has the right coach with Steve Sarkeesian. And, and I do feel like this is the year that they they come back and that we start to see Texas be who Texas wants to be. I kind of have a feeling like, like they might go into Tuscaloosa and upsetting Alabama. I have a feeling like Ooh. that could happen. I'm, wow. That's not going to be my projection, but I have a gut feeling like this is the year for them to do it because you look at what Alabama's trying to rebuild on. They're, they're trying to rebuild with an, a new offensive coordinator, uh, you know, and, and really a, a, a new quarterback and everything. So, and I'm just, I'm really questioning their quarterback room. I don't like their quarterback room. I don't like the pickups that they got in the trans, transfer portal. That's just me. Um, so I, I do think Texas is back. There's also that gut feeling of mine that says, I, it's probably just the, the Oklahoma fan of me that says, I think they're going to come out with like a seven or eight win season again. Uh, that's just because I love to see that. But I, I do feel like Texas is back. I think they have a 10 win season this year and go into the SEC feeling good about themselves. Uh, whether they'll they'll really step up in the SEC or not, we'll have to wait and see. But let's jump over to Oklahoma. Oklahoma is much different than Texas. We talked about our our over under previews, and honestly, I'm having to change my 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 thoughts on on where I stand with Oklahoma. And I was just talking to Jeremy a little bit ago about this. I started off very skeptical, and I think it's just because I'm trying not to let myself down. Yeah. I was very skeptical of Oklahoma and what they can do this year. And looking at the spring game, I think that's why I was so nervous. But I also think they were just, they brought everything down a notch. I don't think they're going full force out there. And it's also a spring game, so let's not look too far into it. When I actually break down what we see on paper, I feel like this is a really good year for Oklahoma. And, and I, I really do feel like uh, Oklahoma can come out and have a great season. Like I said, a cake schedule. I think they should be able to walk right through that schedule with no less than two losses. If they do, then I'm not feeling so great about it. But looking at the offense first, the offense uh, alone, you know, where we're on on uh, for Texas, we're only seeing four new new players on their starting lineup, uh, or uh, not not uh, four new players on their starting lineup, but yeah, 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 that, that's what I meant. As as four new players to the to the the starting lineups, uh, just new to the team. Whereas Oklahoma, and that's that's total offense and defense. Oklahoma has four on the offense alone. Uh, one of them, I guess you could make an argument that maybe he's not really a new to the to this offense because he was here before. It was an Austin Stogner, uh, the tight end. Very happy to have him back. I think that's a huge add to get him back on the on the roster. But we also have uh, uh, Andre Anthony from Michigan came, came in as a, uh, a wide receiver. Big pickup there. I think we really need that wide receiver to step in. Um, and then also Jal- Jaleel Farouk. Uh, Farouk, man, if I can say his name right, uh, he had a huge season last year. Marvin Mims was the key receiver, and Jaleel Farouk stu- stood up whenever he needed to and made big plays when he needed to. And I'm also very excited to see Drake Stoops in his sixth year at Oklahoma here. So he's been improving every season, and seeing how he has he has worked from from starting off as just this 
small little guy that really doesn't ever get the ball. But whenever you watch him block, he is always vicious. He's always out there doing something. I'm, I'm excited to see him. I think that's really big. Uh, and then, of course, we, we also added uh, some some other transfers around. You know, we've got a, a couple of linemen that are on there. And like I said, we've got we've got Austin Stogner coming back uh, to Oklahoma. But it is a new scheme for him. So he is going to have to fit into this new scheme. But I think he's a great over-the-middle uh, target for, for Dylan Gabriel to be able to settle down in the pocket, deliver it over to. Uh, so o- overall, I'm looking at that. And I also think that if Dylan, G- Dylan Gabriel does screw up this season, it wouldn't surprise me to see Jeff Levy step in and say we're we're putting our our true freshman in and and taking over because I think Jackson Ar- Arnold when I look at him uh, compared to some of the other quarterbacks coming out of his class I I know that he's not ranked number one but I put him right up there um, just because I know technically you've got you've got your your Arch Manning up there at number one but like you said Blake I th- I would put Arch Manning down at like a four star personally. Uh, I, I don't think he mm-hmm. really deserves to be this this big thing, and I think it is his last name. But Jackson Arnold, I think he is going to be a a step in if if need be kind of kind of quarterback. So we'll have to see what happens there. But I I, I have faith in Dylan Gabriel. I think his ceiling is very high. I think he's extremely talented. Can he get his his mind settled down and and just calm down and, and deliver the throws on defense? That's where I'm most excited about and looking at because. Ever since getting uh, Brent Venables in at Oklahoma, everybody expected them to come out with a big defense and a strong defense. He didn't have his guys in last year, and we didn't have any kind of depth last year, and so you didn't see that from this Oklahoma defense. But looking at them this year, we have uh, three new guys to the team on defense, and there's also others that are new, new starters. So, you know, looking at the defense, not only do we have some some new guys uh, starting and everything, but then you also look at the depth. The depth is looking a lot better. And the more I look at it on paper, I think Oklahoma's back. I think this is the team that that really steps in. And I, I mean, if if I'm allowed to, to kind of get myself a little too hyped, I am I, I won't be surprised to see Oklahoma run the run the table here in the Big 12 walk away with maybe one loss and make it to that Big 12 championship game and win the Big 12 championship and possibly make the playoff run. Just because I'm looking at this defense and, and listening to how Brent Venables has changed a lot of things in the in the offseason, I think Big 12 media days is what has gotten me back to the optimism because listening to Brent Venables, listening to other coaches, listening to the players and some of the changes that have gone into this offseason and seeing the depth uh, I, I think this defense is going to step up in a big way, and I think the offense has only has only improved. So, uh, and and also, it feels like Oklahoma had such a horrible season last year because they went six and six, the worst season they've had in a long time. But Oklahoma, uh, they were only they were only one one score away from winning five of those seven losses total, uh, including the bowl game. So. There, there was only two that were really bad losses. That was Texas and TCU. You take those two out, they were a score away from winning those those five, those uh, other five losses. So Oklahoma, I, I, I think I think I was really down on them just because of some small things that I really shouldn't have been critiquing them on. I think this is a big, big bounce back year for Oklahoma. So personally, I, I like Oklahoma. Uh, Jeremy, let's start off with you. What do you see from Oklahoma kind of coming into the Big 12 this year? The, the first thing that comes to my mind for Oklahoma, their defense has got to do some work. Because after last year, led, I think, if I remember right, they were like 120th ranked. Yeah. That's that's harsh. Like That's not Oklahoma defense. That's not what Oklahoma football in general is like. Like We're used to seeing Oklahoma shining, whether it was back in the day when Baker Mayfield was at the helm or whoever. Like. We want to see old Oklahoma football back. Like I know on the offensive side, I know you guys do get some some good key lineman returners like um like Tyler Guyton and like Savian Bird, and that's going to be huge. It's going to be it's going to be a tough road for Oklahoma if if the pieces of the puzzle don't come together. It's really really going to be tough for Oklahoma to say the least. And overall, Oklahoma just needs to find those pieces and just get them together just so they can make themselves look right and like old school Oklahoma football truly is like and then the fans can come home happy and then you won't be then you won't be screaming at the TV in disappointment you can be screaming at the TV in excitement and 
the last time we watched an Oklahoma game, it was really kind of scary just because you were yelling a lot at the TV, and I'm thankful you were yelling at the TV instead of me just because <laughs> you gave me so much crap saying I'm a bad luck charm. And I'm like, no, 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 I just don't know if this is Oklahoma or not. What was, so, what was the last Oklahoma game that we watched the other um, I'm trying to think. We were, I think, oh, man. Did, did we watch the bowl game together? Yeah, we watched the okay. bowl game together. Yeah, against Florida State. Yeah, just because you said that I'm a bad luck charm, and you were, you were so hype into it, and then all of a sudden I showed up, and then it all of a sudden just went downhill. Yeah, so, yeah. I don't know. I pray to God that's not true, <laughs> but um, if it is, I just really need to watch something different. Yeah. So that's my honest opinion on how Oklahoma is going to be this year. Yeah, and you go back to Oklahoma's defense last year and seeing what they what they did and where they, they failed. Uh, for one, I think there was just some things where – I, I don't like calling guys out sp- specifically in, in college, and I, I hear a lot of guys do that, you know, kind of kind of shy away from that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, I will call them out just because it's my team. Uh, I feel like Danny Stutzman, and, and I've heard him say the same thing. He was disappointed in his play last year a lot because there was certain times Oklahoma's run defense was terrible last year. Their, their run defense mm-hmm. did not step up in key moments. There was key moments on fourth down that they would let, let somebody through. Uh, and, and for a big gain, we saw Max Duggan run all over oh, Oklahoma, man. just big bad. time plays. Uh, and then, of course, against against uh, Texas, you know, you have to stop the run against Bijan Robinson. They couldn't do it. And, and a big part of that, I think uh, it's not all on Danny Stetsman, but there was many times where he read the wrong gap and he knows it. He knows what he was doing wrong last year. But I also look at when he had those screw ups and when those big plays were happening. You have the same guys out there for four downs in a row. Whereas this year, you can swap them out in two two downs, two downs, swap out the line, swap out the, the linebackers. You can swap a couple of guys out, and you have the, the, depth, the depth to do it. So I'm looking at the depth and seeing what Oklahoma brings. And just looking at the size alone, this, is, this looks like a Brent Venables defense. Uh, and that's what I'm most excited about, Blake. So, Josh, you remember... Um, you know, last year when I told you don't get like so discouraged over Oklahoma right right now. Yeah, yeah. I said there's going to be growing pains and and things like that because Brett Venables has a vision. Okay, Brett Venables knew that Oklahoma was going into the Southeastern Conference. He was changing a scheme. He was changing a defense. He was trying to build a defense into an SEC caliber defense in the trenches. That is what he was trying to do. That's what he's still trying to do. That is the reason – that is the biggest question mark, in my opinion, for this Oklahoma football team is their defense. Like last year, watching them play Kansas State, man, third and 18 and and the Martinez kid uh, just on a a simple quarterback draw goes for a a 50-yard touchdown on like fourth and 18. Like – like I mean, excuse me, third and 18. Uh, Third and 18 just – Quarterback draw, right up the gut, touchdown. And it's like, that has been Oklahoma's problem the last few years. And they can't they can't tackle in space. Uh, they can't stop the run. Uh, they couldn't do it against Georgia in the playoffs back in 2017. Uh, but I think Brett Venables is here to change that look. And so, I do question Dylan Gabriel. Can he stay on the football field? Uh, I do think he's very talented. Got to stop turning the ball over. Got to play a little smarter. Uh, last year, I felt like he was he was a little worried, Josh, uh, of the rush getting to him, and his he was a little sporadic in the pocket at times. And uh, I, I think I think that clock, that internal clock's got to uh, got to it's got to go off, and and he's got to pick and choose when to when to tuck it and run. Uh, but I, I want to see him stay in the pocket, man, and deliver throws. I think this Oklahoma team, with their schedule, I agree with you. I think they can win nine to ten games. I really do. Uh, I have them losing to Texas, but we all know that anything can happen in that football game. Anything. Uh, that is one of the biggest rivalries in the country. They have UCF at home. If that was at the bounce house, I might give that to UCF with uh, John Rice Plumley coming back, Gus Malzahn. Uh, that just sounds like a Gus Malzahn UCF. lover to me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually do not uh, care for Gus. Uh, <laughs> You're but the Gus bus. I, I, now l- l- let me let me tell you something about Gus. I I, I like. I like Gus as a 
as a person. I think he is a good football coach, but as far as at Auburn, he could never get us over that hump. And um, I think his 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 time had just dried up, honestly. But like you know, I'm happy that he's at UCF. I'm happy that he's happy. I, I think that's awesome. I think they're gonna be. I think they're gonna be good this year. I really do. I think UCF is gonna have a good football team this year. They're gonna compete, man. Yeah, uh, and and that's what they want to do. They want to show the world that they can compete. Uh, Oklahoma at Kansas. Uh, <clears throat> they they've got the Jaden Daniels kid coming back at quarterback. Uh, but I still, you know, obviously I, I like Oklahoma over Kansas. I think yeah. they can win that football game. Uh, I think Oklahoma State is going to be ac- absolute cheeks this year. I think they're going to be terrible. Uh, West Virginia cheeks. I think they're uh, they're buns. BYU. I don't think they're going to hold up in the Big Twelve. Uh, and TCU, man, rounding your schedule out, everything that they lost, I they're a question mark. Yeah. So exactly. definitely, you, your your schedule favors you, man. Like. You got Iowa State at Cincinnati, Tulsa at the crib, SMU. Uh, no, no, you go to Tulsa. I'm sorry. Yeah, two Tulsa. Uh, SMU at the crib and Arkansas State at the crib. I mean, that is a. I mean, two Tulsa. Come on, you should two win Tulsa that game. is a home game. Uh, it's Wait, a home it, game. It, well, I mean, it, it's it's at Tulsa, it's, but it's still a home game. Oh, oh, yeah, you're, you're yeah, only yeah, a couple hours so from cold. Norman, yeah. and, and you're you're in yeah. Tulsa where it's full of OU fans. Yeah. You know, there's there's not really yeah. such a thing as a real. Oklahoma State fan. I haven't really met one. I, I've met some people that went to college there or something, you know, and all that. But I mean, that, well, they, they don't, don't really have a fan base there. I don't think. Well, what what is there to root for? I mean, Mike Gundy <laughs> can't win the big one. I mean, I, what I, I saw some. Correct me if I'm wrong here. I don't know the exact number, but he's only beaten Oklahoma like two or three times since yeah, he's been yeah. at Oklahoma State. Very few. Uh, yeah, it, it's maybe three times. Three, yeah. yeah, maybe three times. But yeah, yeah, he has not. He's not won very many, and, and that's that's the thing that I think is silly. That you know, uh, he's he's really bitter towards Oklahoma for leaving, uh, and and you know where the question the question gets brought up is is a, you know is there still going to be a rivalry? And he's like, no, I don't want it. Oh, I don't want it. Well, you're already booked up. So I mean, it's not like we're we're yeah. going to bring it back right now. But yeah. in the future, like who's to say that the Bedlam rivalry won't come back? And it's it's a fun rivalry just because it's in state. But other than that, Oklahoma owns it. It's just it's not really a rivalry. Yeah, guess what, Josh? You got a new rivalry. Okay, you got a new rivalry. Texas A&M's back. All right, yeah. you got Missouri oh, up man. there. All right. And then you're gonna fall in love with going to Baton Rouge. Oh yeah, uh, you know yeah, I, can't, I mean I can't wait for Baton Rouge trip. Yeah, uh, we'll we'll have to go there together I mean, or something. Absolutely. Hey, I'm three hours away. I will hop in the car and and head that way, brother. Well, I'll, uh, I'll fly down to your hey, house. And we'll drive over together then. So. Hey, how about your duffel bag? Oh, uh, fly- <laughs> let the fat kid come to Louisiana. I know they have fly- good food there. <laughs> Fly into New Orleans because if you fly into Mobile, you're gonna pay a thousand dollars. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it is ridiculous here. Uh, so yeah, fly into New Orleans and and I will uh, I'll pick you up on the way. Absolutely. So, uh, well, and and so guys, yeah, the the reason why I, I look at Oklahoma and, and their defense, I think we have less of a less of a uh, a question mark there. I mean, it's still a question mark because we haven't seen them, but when we look at their their defense so uh, i think billy bowman jr he, he was outstanding last year uh and as a safety he led the team in, in tackles i think at, at, there was one point in the, in the season i remember quoting the stat on the show there was one, one point in the season where he had more tackles than the rest of the the starters uh so i mean he was he was phenomenal and wasn't that anything past him which was his job um but then his his backup is key lawrence which is always great when you can swap in somebody as, as great as him but looking at some of the, the, the starters that, that are coming back and everything from last year, but looking at the depth, so let's go over to fast safety. We've got uh, Reggie Pearson, him coming over. He's a he's a Texas Tech transfer. Uh, he was really, he's a big guy. He fits Brent Venable's type of defense look. Uh, so seeing him come in, I think that's that's really big. And then to back him up is Peyton, uh, yeah, Peyton Bowen, who is a freshman, also a big dude, and he's a freshman that Brent Venables wanted to come to Oklahoma. So, again, I'm, I'm very happy about that. If it's a guy that Brent Venables can can stand by, uh, then I'm cool with it. And then, of course, we've got Rondell Bo- Bethroyd, uh, who came from uh, Wake Forest. He's a defensive end, uh, a really big boy. I mean, he's, again, a Brent, Brent Venables kind of guy. Desan McCullough, who came from IU, uh, really big guy. And he's a, a linebacker that 
that, that is a Brent Venables type of linebacker. So, I mean, I'm just, I'm just re- spitting off some of these names so we can look at it and say, man, like I'm really happy to see the depth that Oklahoma has because they didn't have any kind of rotations to rotate these, these guys out and keep them from getting tired. So uh, I personally, I'm, I'm looking at it and I, I had faith in Brent Venables from day one. So I'm not going to start to go, uh, you know, pessimistic on him again and kind of go against Oklahoma. I'm going to hop back on the train. I'm going to say ten, Oklahoma has their 10 win season. Like they should, uh, I, I can, I, I can give them two losses going playing Texas. I think Texas is going to be tough this year. So playing Texas, I, I hope Oklahoma comes out and thumps them. You better not lose that game after going 49 to zero last year. Uh, you know, and, and mm-hmm. for, for Texas fans, I want to keep on throwing that in there. Let's also remember that Oklahoma was throwing their tight end and t- tight end in at the quarterback position because they didn't have a backup quarterback to lean on. Uh, and so, I mean, just looking at that and I think, uh, you know, I, overall, I can, I, I can understand if you lose two games because I feel like Texas and then possibly if, if Oklahoma shows up or if Oklahoma state shows up, then possibly they could, they could squeeze in a, a loss there or possibly to t- maybe like a TCU or Kansas State, one of these teams that they really shouldn't lose to. I'm, I'm just naming those three off as possibilities. But other than that, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see Oklahoma with with kind of the hype that Brent Venables has given the fan base uh, go away with a, an 11-win season and feel good about going into the, into the SEC. I think that's a really good way to, to, to enter in. But, guys, let's jump on to TCU, making a huge change from what we saw last year. You're not going to have uh, – you're not going to have Miller, uh, Kendra Miller, I think it was. Uh, and then uh, you're not going to have, uh, let's see, who was there? Quentin Johnston. You're not going to have him at a wide out, and you're not going to have Max Duggan. So what are you going to replace this this huge piece of your offense with? Uh, you know, and, and it's it's going to it's gonna look a lot different for TCU. So uh, I'm looking at TCU and, and what they did last year. I, I believe in Sonny Dykes. I think that he is a phenomenal coach for what he did last year. But I also think this is just going to be a, a big down year for him just because, again, I think you look at other teams that are stepping up. I feel like Texas Tech is going to look strong. I think Oklahoma and Texas are going to look strong. Uh, I don't think Baylor is going to have a down year the way that they did last year. So it, it, is TCU able to bounce back from what they lost and – put together a, another good season this year are we just going to see them kind of drop down to maybe a seven or eight win season um blake we'll start off with you what do you think about tcu this year i, I just um uh, i'm not a believer in them this year i th- think they take a step back i know they got the jojo rural kid from alabama but there's just there's just too many missing pieces man max duggan was such a big piece of that offense and to lose him, you got Chandler Morris in there. Uh, That's it. I just, what is their schedule? What, yeah, what does their schedule look like, man? I mean, yeah, they lost a Heisman finalist at quarterback. Like, yeah, let's and their defense, their defense got absolutely annihilated in the national championship. I mean, Georgia beat them sixty-five to seven. Georgia could have scored one hundred and fifty points on them if they wanted to easily. But like, so we got- easily. We got uh, Colorado, uh, Nichols Win. State, Win. Houston. I think that's possibly a loss. I'll give them a, I'll give them a win. Where's it at? Um, let I me see. I think it's in Houston. Uh, yeah, it's at Houston. I give them an L. I, I'm gonna say a loss. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go win. You're I'm gonna, gonna go, go win. win. Okay, so so you're giving them three there. Um, let's see, and then we got SMU at TCU. Uh, four and oh in in my book okay uh, and then west virginia five and oh okay and then you got uh iowa state at iowa state oh tough place to play tough place to play uh i love that yeah place. man iowa state and, at I, iowa I will state. say a lot of people so a lot of people who don't understand big 12 maybe you don't know iowa state Underrated mm-hmm. place to, to play, and especially since they've done their renovations, unbelievable. Uh, renovations. Very yeah. underrated because it's a small small place, but their fan base is loud. Uh, so I, mean, I, yeah. I think the same thing with Iowa. I mean, because you think about Iowa, we don't really have a whole lot other than growing corn, wrestling, and going out and watching some foot, college football on a Saturday. Yeah. So, but yeah. Um, so, uh, so you see, you're you're up to Iowa five. State. You're up to five. Uh, so then now at, at Iowa State, what what are you giving them for that one? I'm going to go with a loss. I think they trip up there. Okay, so they're stuck at five there. Uh, we got BYU 
It's at TCU. Uh, man, that's a tough one. Uh, I'll, I'll TCU at home. I like that six and one. Okay, and then we got um, K State at K State. That, that's a loss. Okay, uh, and then we got at Texas Tech. That's a loss. And then we got T, uh, oh, Texas at home. Loss. And then we got Baylor at home. Loss. And then at Oklahoma. Loss. Yeah, I see I see four losses right there at the end of the season in a row. So yeah. they're going to walk away with maybe a six. I, I'll, give them, I'll give them up to, uh, you know, maybe seven or eight at the most. Maybe. But yeah. I'm thinking maybe seven. Maybe. I'm sticking with seven. Because I think they will pull off yeah. one that they, they shouldn't. But I also think there's yeah, others that, that we kind of – you kind of also gave them gave them some that I think they should win that I don't think – maybe, yeah. maybe they won't win. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm – It's going to be a tricky year. Well, Definitely. And, and looking at TCU, I mean, I, it feels like they lost a lot because they lost uh, they lost Duggan and they lost uh, Quentin Johnston. That was a huge part mm-hmm. of their offense. If it wasn't yep. even it just lofting it up deep and, and hoping that, that – uh, Quentin Johnston was was fast enough to go and get it. It was Max Duggan taking off with his legs, uh, and then they also yep. had Demarcado and and Miller back there in the back backfield, uh, just running all over the place on guys. So, uh, you know, looking at it, they only have three new guys to the team that are uh, stepping up on their starting starting lineup for offense. But it's going to feel like a totally different offense, and their offense is what kept them alive. Think about that Baylor game last year when they had that 17 mm-hmm. seconds to hurry up and swap out and hurry up and line up and kick a field goal and win the game in the last second. That's the type of offense that they had. It was that prepared, that ready. I don't think you're going to have the same offense. I think you're going to have the same coaching. That's why I think I can give them that those those six wins and possibly a seventh because I believe in Sonny Dykes. I believe in his his system, and I believe in, I believe in who he's hired because what they did last year was unbelievable. But I'm just – I'm not sure. Uh, and, you know – I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm looking at, at at their schedule though, and I just I don't know if I have have a whole lot of faith in in what TCU can do. I don't think they're going to have the nearly the good the same season as they did last year. But Jeremy, you guys have said the best. I don't necessarily think TCU is going to do anything. Like it's going to be really really hard for TCU. All you really have to rely on us is just Chandler Morris, and outside of that, you you better find a four leaf clover and pray for some luck, just because you're going to be. You're going to be struggling for this. I mean, you get a lot of these guys that have been a two, three stringer that have just been sitting there watching on the side, just haven't been really doing much outside of in practice, going through everything. But now that you get all these guys that are out, you got to you gotta step to the plate and you got to show up or you're going to have to shut up and take the disappointment. Like, there's nothing really else you can say about TCU, about this situation, as much as it sucks to see a team like TCU have a have a really down season, but unfortunately that's just how the cookie crumbles, and there's no other way to really put it. But it's definitely going to be a, a tough season, if not a tough couple years. But anything's possible, but I don't think it's really going to be a good possibility. But anything's well, anything's possible. And and here's what I will say for TCU. Uh, I was I had to look this up real quick because I wasn't sure exactly where they stood, but they were 20th in 2023 ranking uh, or in, in the uh, recruiting rankings. Uh, really? This is according to 247 yeah, Sports. Really? So that's that's very good. So you've got some young yeah. guys that Sonny Dykes can can work with. So don't don't get discouraged. Not only that, but you're also having two of the big dogs leave. Yeah. So this and I mean the that may not be a good thing for the conference per se. But it also opens up the door for you looking a lot better than maybe you really are, and getting some big time recruits because you didn't you didn't get any five stars. You got eight eight four stars, which is really good for TCU. But you you have some guys that T, that Sunny Dykes can work with, and moving on uh, in, into the twenty twenty four recruiting class, you you're, you can build on that. So I, I do think looking in the future, just because TCU is having a down year this year, to our speculation, to our to our uh, our knowledge but other than that I, I think that they they've got some some upslopes so i think they can they, i think they can still turn things around one thing i do want to mention just because pulling this up it's it's kind of funny to look at the top four uh in in the 2023 rankings for the recruiting uh is really all sec schools because it goes alabama georgia texas oklahoma so i i just i kind of like to see that and we won't mention that team from columbus down there at number five but 
uh, the top four <laughs> taking over for, for SEC. So, uh, you know, Oklahoma and Texas are definitely adding to that SEC tradition in recruiting at the very and, least. And, and, and Josh, you can always just go ahead and put it down there that the, the last team standing will likely be from the SEC too. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, Oklahoma <laughs> will, will definitely – uh, prove that whenever they they win that national championship and come in and win the there SEC first year. No, no, but uh, I won't get too far hey, ahead of myself. Hey, Missouri that. played hey, in it. Missouri, yeah. Missouri played in the SEC title game their first two years. They did. I, I mean, it's possible. Well, and, and honestly, if Oklahoma can come away with an eleven win season, let's say they win the Big Twelve, I mean, you, can you imagine how much better that twenty twenty four recruiting class could could get? Well, Guys, look at look at look at what we just look at what we just walked away with from. Uh, and we're going to the SEC. You got to help us keep this this up. Uh, and you know, who knows? You know, the biggest recruiting pitch that you're going to have now is you're going to play in the NFL junior. Like, pretty much, you're going literally. to play in the AAA of you're going to play in the AAA of the NFL. Yeah. Like, like the, the 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 minor leagues of pro football. You're going to play in the SEC. So now you can pitch that in recruiting. Um, so absolutely, yeah, I, Oklahoma. And, Oklahoma and Texas, super excited. Yeah, but uh, guys, let's move on to K State real quick. Is K State are, are they able to put together another season to make a contention run in the Big Twelve? Because I mean, if if we're honest with it, they lost Adrian Martinez and they lost Deuce Vaughn. That was pretty much yep. their offense last year. Their defense, though, I will say, their defense is known for being sneaky good. They've just got these big, uh, you know, bull nose defensive players that just know how to stand up and and, and do what's right, um, you know. And so I just I'm, I'm looking at the you know at, at what they have, and I, I I'm never going to count K State out because they're that kind of a team, and it's not like they they haven't kind of gone through just constantly losing uh, a, a good player right after they had a good season because I feel like that happens every year with K State. But uh, Blake, we'll start off with you. Do you think K-, K State stands a chance in the Big Twelve to make make another contention run? Uh, I do. I, I think, like you said, their defense is really good. Um, the Howard kid, he's he's going to be their quarterback, I'm sure. Right? He's back. I would imagine so. If um, I'm, I'm trying to pull yeah. their their uh, depth chart to make sure it hasn't updated on me, but uh, uh, yeah, Will Howard. The so he is a thing, senior. So he'll yeah. he'll definitely be starting. He was very good last year too. Absolutely. Yeah, he come in and, and he played well. Um, but he he struggled against Alabama, but I'm not sure he's seen any any type of defense like that. Uh, but you know he 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 made a couple bad throws against uh, TCU when they were up in that game. But that was him coming off the bench. He was third string quarterback, uh, but he he fit in well last year uh, in that offense. The more he got his feet wet and got to play, I'm just looking at their schedule, man. There's some really tough games. They, they go to Texas tech. They go to Texas. They have Baylor at home. They go to Kansas. Um, they go to Oklahoma state. I, I I mean, that's, I don't think that's going to be a huge problem, uh, this coming year because I think Oklahoma state is buns. Uh, but, they go to Missouri. That that could potentially be a, a, a nice little hiccup game right there. Uh, you know, Missouri is kind of a question mark in my opinion uh, this year. Like they weren't very good last year, but uh, this is kind of a do or die year for Eli Drinkwitz uh, there at, at at Mizzou. So going to that game and it being an er, going to Missouri and it being an early kickoff, anything could happen there. Uh, but you know, I do think there's a couple spots in the schedule that they could slip up at Texas Tech, TCU at home, maybe. You know, that's a that's a question mark. I have Kansas State winning that game, but uh, they have Houston at home, at Texas, Baylor at home. So I do think they 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 set up well for another run. You know, I, I think the schedule's favorable. Um, their defense is always going to be really good, but can you replace a Deuce Vaughn? Uh, that that is uh, a I don't guy think that you, you saw. I, yeah, I, I don't you, think you replace you, him. But the one thing I didn't realize you, uh, is that they got Treshawn Ward uh, transferred from Florida State. Yeah. That's that's a big pickup. So I think that that can definitely help. Uh, I don't like like I said. I don't think it necessarily. Um, I don't think it necessarily makes up for losing Deuce Vaughn of all guys. 
but that's a very good pickup to put back there in the backfield. And looking at their, and their whole depth chart, too, they've got seniors and juniors uh, for their starting. They've got a couple of sophomores on defense. But other than that, they've got seniors seniors and juniors all the way through. They've got uh, another another soft, a couple of sophomores, but one of them uh, is Keegan Johnson, who's a transfer from North Dakota State. And, yeah, you might be saying, what's North Dakota State? But they are a very good uh, football team up, up there. Up in Bison country, they're a whole yeah. different yeah, breed. Yeah. Josh, didn't you guys didn't, – yeah. didn't they lose Uzama too? Um, Felix Uzama? I think so, yeah. Yeah, it looks like they did lose him. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, a, a couple of guys – I mean, I don't know, just – Looking at looking at their their roster, it's it's not like they're really adding a lot of new pieces to the team, mm-hmm. but like you said, losing Deuce Vaughn is a, is a big thing. I think losing Adrian Martinez uh, is is a big loss too, just because I think he played phenomenally well in that system. Mm-hmm. But I do think that mm-hmm. Will Howard, uh, he's a senior this year. I think I think he's the right right move to step into that that role. Definitely. Like, no you look at Will Howard; he's gonna he's gonna shine. Like. As you mentioned, being a senior coming in last year, he's going to give everything he's got, blood, sweat, and tears, the whole nine yards, and he's going to give it everything he's got. But, like, I honestly think TCU can easily run it back. Like, I think they can do, like, maybe a 9-3 and three or even, like, another 10-2 and two record easy. Like, oh, nice. as Blake, you mentioned, like, they can they can really come into these – they can come into these places and they can just completely kick the crap out of you. Then – Looking at their schedule, I love I love your terminology. I love I love when you say cheeks. That's that makes me smile a little bit. That's just <laughs> funny. Like you look at this, it's gonna be another fun year for for uh, K State. Like it, you really can't say much about K State just because obviously it's K State. Like even having um um why am I drawing a blank? Like Chris Kilman, um, who's arguably one of the best coaches around. Like he's definitely going to be getting these guys worked into shape and just getting them all ready to go. Then it's going to be another fun year for K State. I I I stick with what I said. I I was thinking nine and three or a ten and two season. Yeah, uh, and, and mm. yeah, I I think I think they they have a chance. I'm I'm kind of capping them out at, at 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 maybe like that seven mark though personally. Uh, you know, right around seven or eight. I just I'm, I'm, when I, when you look at their schedule and see they do have a tough schedule this year. Yeah. So uh, I think there's some that they could pull off that. I wouldn't count a win, um, mm-hmm. so uh, there, there is that. Maybe they maybe they do surprise me a little more, but I just feel like this is kind of a a down year for K State, which means maybe seven or eight wins. But I still think they're going to be tough. Definitely. Um, and like I said, I think they've always got that surprisingly good defense. But let's go ahead and move on to the other Kansas team. But before we do, I want to mention another another sponsor of ours, and that is Big Frig. You can check out Big Frig. Go to BigFrig.com. That's B-I-G-F-R-I-G.com. And you can use code RISING220 for 20% off. You might be asking, what is Big Frig? Maybe you haven't heard of them, whatever the case may be. They are an amazing uh, product. Uh, they have some amazing, yeah, Jeremy's got his tumbler, his uh, tumbler in here uh, today. They've got some amazing tumblers. This is the 20-ounce tumbler. They even put our logo on them. Uh, you can get a quote for getting your logo or anything like that, any kind of design. They've also got cool designs on the tumblers. The tumblers are amazing. Go check those out, and they're they're great for keeping your your drink hot or cold, however you like it, however you're you're uh, desiring to keep it. And they also make an amazing cooler. Their coolers are amazing. We have uh, we showed those off on camera a little while back. Uh, we've got some coolers from them that are absolutely amazing. You're going to need something to keep your drink cold and keep your your food and all of your drinks cold uh, whenever you go on your tailgating this this uh, fall whenever you go out to all these football games wherever it is that you're going to cheer on your team you need to keep your food and your drinks cold so go over to bigfrig.com and check out their awesome supply of all of their tumblers and coolers you can go over again you can go to bigfrig.com and use code rising220 that's r-i-s-i-n-g-t-o two zero and you can save 20% on these amazing products. They compete very well with the bigger brands, and I think they look amazing. They're very durable. The locks on the, the, the coolers are probably the coolest feature to me, the way they lock down. Uh, much easier to deal with, and I also feel like they're uh, they're just, I don't know, they, they, feel, they feel sturdier than some of the other brands. So go check them out, bigfrig.com, and get all of your tailgating tumblers and coolers over there from now on because... That is where you want to go. You will not be disappointed. You will not be disappointed. 
But guys, let's move on to Kansas. Looking at Kansas, looking at their schedule, they do have kind of a tough schedule. But if we back up a, a year ago, Lance Leipold was able to put together a very good season for Kansas. And winning, they started off 6-0, and uh, kind of went downhill from there. But they also had a very tough schedule at the end of the season last year, looking at, at the teams that they went against and really playing a very good game against Arkansas, even though they, they couldn't pull out the win. Still put, pushing that one down to the wire in the bowl game last year. So Kansas, I, I feel like Kansas is, is in good hands. I think they're going to start to turn things around and, and start to look really good in the Big 12. Again, you're, you're also having two of the top dogs uh, leave the conference. So I think anybody really stands a chance in the Big 12 right now. But you look at their schedule. They've got Missouri State. Uh, they're going to uh, be... Uh, let's see. I think this one is at home. Uh, yeah. So they, they 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 do have the Fighting Illini come uh, to their stadium to play. Uh, so I mean, just kind of looking at at their 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 schedule. I mean, uh, Illinois is no joke. You're going to have a, a tough battle there. So I don't think they start off six and zero like they did last year. I think they also put some of those tougher games up in the front of the season as well. Like Texas, uh, they're going to have to go to Texas this year. So uh, you know, just kind of looking at at. Their, their schedule here, um, I feel like UCF is probably another loss. They've got Oklahoma on there. Iowa State's going to be a tough one. Texas Tech, K-State, uh, they, they, can win, they can end the season with a win there. But looking at Kansas and, and what they were able to, able to piece together last year, I think they are going to be a tough team to beat. I don't think they're going to be an easy walk in the park like we've known Kansas to be for a really long time. I think Lance Leipold is, has done a phenomenal job there. And I'm excited. I'm excited to see what Kansas is, is able to do. Looking through the, uh, let's see, I think Missouri State, Nevada, um, possibly BYU just because it's at home, but I don't want to give that one to them. Uh, and then I think Oklahoma State, Iowa State, uh, possibly K-State because you're at home, uh, even though that doesn't mean so much in, in Kansas. I think I'm looking, and I think I, that they could have another six-win season. Uh, I think they can they can get six wins and I think if they, they show up to these other games, they could squeeze out a seventh win in there this year. So uh, me personally, I'm looking at Kansas. Uh, I, I like the future for Kansas, again, with Oklahoma, Texas leaving. That kind of opens up the Big 12 um, just because we know that Oklahoma and Texas have been the ones running the Big 12 for so long. So I, I like I like Kansas this year. Um, Blake, how do you think Kansas holds up in the future uh, going forward? Uh, it's just honestly, man, about their defense and can uh, the the Daniels kid at quarterback can he stay healthy? Uh, last year he got hurt and that kind of derailed their season. TCU come into the uh, come into uh, come into their house and and knocked them off and everything and um, you know it happened and and uh what they start six and oh and they finish what six and six i or think six so. and six yeah they went on six straight yeah. losses there so, and still yeah, still pretty and, close and, games overall they didn't they didn't really get blown out or in, in any of those or anything yeah uh too bad so we, still still fought pretty hard uh you know tcu just losing 28 to 31 um k-state they, they, they did get whomped by, by K-State, but they went into mm-hmm. overtime with Texas, losing by one point. Uh, West Virginia was it was a close game. Uh, so, I mean, just looking at their losses, they had some some tough losses, but overall they, they still still kept it close in some of these these big games too. It's it's honestly going to come down to the success of, of Lance up there in, in uh, Kansas is how can he bring kids – to that place and attract uh, big time athletes, uh, because we all know that's a basketball school, right? Yep. Uh, yep. But you gotta you gotta grow you gotta grow on what you have right now, and that is you have an elite quarterback, but you have to keep him healthy. He has to stay on the football field for you to win games. I do think they can start four and zero with this schedule. Okay. Uh, will it happen? I don't know, but I think they can get to six wins. I think they could possibly get to seven wins uh, this year. If they start four and oh, I think they could get to seven wins. Um, it's going to be tough to, I, to, I beat, think, to beat Illinois, but having them at home, I think, helps them. Yeah. Um, What's their schedule? Like I, I don't know. I like, I'm, um, I'm just not like. I'm not big on Illinois this year. Um, 
I don't. I don't know. I'm not a Big Ten believer, guys. Like I'm. I'm. I'm just, like they run the football and everything. And, I don't and think Illinois all. is going to have as good of a season as they did last year, but I do yeah. think Billima is the right move uh, at Illinois for for what they need. I think he's going to keep them right around that seven to nine wins. Uh, I don't think he's really going to fall below that. But looking at their schedule, Jeremy, they've got uh, Missouri State, Illinois at Nevada, uh, and then BYU at Texas, UCF at Oklahoma State, um, and then Oklahoma at Iowa State, Kansas, or sorry, um, Texas Tech, Kansas State, and then at Cincinnati. That'll be interesting. Yeah, so I, I do agree with you. I think they could squeeze into seven if they if they play like they did last year. Yeah. Because there was like yeah. I said, there was some big games. They they almost beat Texas again. So I mean and that was yeah. that was a shootout. Literally. So, uh I mean just just going into that, I mean I I think I think they can. I think they can get really close here. Absolutely, I agree. Um, the, those first four are the big ones, though. You got to win the first four, fellas. You do. I think you have to. Uh, yeah, you have like to. I said, if, especially that Illinois. I think that's really the the one that stands out to me. I, th- I guess BYU. BYU is not a given one. Uh, I don't really know what to yeah. expect from BYU, but yeah, I think I think BYU is another one. So I, f- I guess there's there's two of them uh, that. I mean, you you got two two really tough ones, but the good thing is you're kind of splitting them up with some easier ones that you should be able to win right in between them because you start off with Missouri State. Get your your feet a little wet and and just win the game. Don't don't try to go in there and do anything cute, uh, and then come back home and, and beat beat uh, uh, Illinois. I guess you you stay at home, but beat Illinois, uh, and then one, then you're starting to feel good. Go to Nevada, uh, and and again just just win the game, and then come back home and and beat BYU. So yeah, I, I agree with you. I think those first four are very very crucial for them. But like the big thing is, as much as we all want to look at. And see these guys go four and zero right at the beginning of the season. You just got to be, just got to focus on one and zero. Just get get the start and just go from there. Like as you mentioned, Blake, just keep uh, keep Jalen Daniels healthy is going to be your big big crucial thing for Kansas here. Like mm-hmm. if you if you get him running around like a chicken with his head cut off and getting hurt and doing every little itty bitty mm-hmm. thing that he can physically try and do just from his natural talent. He's gonna get worn out. He's gonna get hurt. He's gonna. He's really gonna be in a world of hurt if he's gonna have to keep doing this for this entire college football season. Then yep. looking at it, it's that's all really you can't really break down. It's just a matter of keeping your quarterback healthy in this situation, especially for Kansas team. I strongly think they can come back and look like what they did last year, but hopefully, hopefully get that other win, stay on strong on the win column, stay on the lose column. But I mean. Obviously, college football ain't the easiest thing to do. Like, any of these teams can come out and completely blow your marbles. You may you may think they're cheeks, or you may think they're the greatest thing ever. But like these teams, I'm sorry, I just love that. <laughs> but like you really can't say much more. Like it's gonna be a fun season for them, but they just gotta stay healthy is the big key thing. Yeah, Jalen Daniels definitely needs to stay healthy. But let's remember too, whenever they and whenever he was hurt last season, and and uh, what is his name? Jason Bean. Bean uh, yeah. So yeah, Jason Bean stepped yeah. in and had a phenomenal game. Bean. So uh, I, I think they're I think they're sitting pretty well in the QB position overall for Kansas. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's move on real quick and just look at the expansion as as a whole. So we've got uh, Houston, UCF, BYU, and Cincinnati all coming into the league as Oklahoma and Texas are leaving. How does this expansion look for the conference? Do we think it's a good look? Uh, do we? Does it look like? Maybe this is this is something to help build the conference up and keep them around a little longer, uh, or is this just not good enough and it's just going to turn into something that's just going to end up dissipating? Uh, I'll start off with you, Blake. I think it was, man. This is a tough one because I want to answer <laughs> it a certain way, but I'm <laughs> look. I'm going to take this road. Uh, I think the Big Twelve showed that they were more prepared than the Pac Twelve. Absolutely, okay. and the, the Big Twelve had a vision of saying, "Okay, we're losing our two biggest key contributors, our money makers. All right, we're losing them to the greatest conference uh, in in college football, in college sports. Okay, and they will no longer be with us, so we have to go find." Uh, some some teams to fill that that gap that void right and and 
they they did it with the best possible teams that they could get, right? Uh, you know, dipping in out of the a uh, the AAC and with Houston and UCF and all all of that, uh, Cincinnati. It, it's great, right? Like, kudos to you, Big Twelve. You, you stayed afloat. You 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 showed the Pac twelve. Uh, that you were far more prepared and you were way ahead of the game. But as far as being an elite conference, I'm sorry, like dog water. Yeah, like, look, I just you're you're look and and all these people say, oh well, when was the last time that Texas and Oklahoma played each other in the Big Twelve championship? It's been TCU versus uh, Baylor or TCU versus uh, Kansas State last year yeah. or. Whoever the last you know, two seasons I look, I wasn't care. Oklahoma, but the six before that was all Oklahoma. So that, that's that's the only thing for me. Yeah, exactly. Texas is is a big dog when it comes to the names in the Big Big Twelve. But really, you're losing Oklahoma. That's your big dog. I mean, Literally. Oklahoma owns that conference. They had we Oklahoma has more conference championships, Big Twelve conference champion championships than the rest of the conference combined, probably. Texas has the most money though. They do. That's, That's why I say true. they're they're definitely a big dog when it comes to revenue, and yeah. you're losing a big name, but you're not really yeah. losing a big dog when it comes to like who's who's winning in the Big Twelve or nothing. His, so, historic historically, you are though historically, like, but yeah, all time. Uh, depending on how far back you want to go, I guess you have to go pretty far back. Um, but I mean, it's it's just been it's been close to you know 15 years since they've been super relevant. Oh yeah. Yeah, so oh, yeah. I mean it's it's I mean, it's it, just it's been a minute. Yeah, so you you're def, you're definitely losing your two biggest revenue makers though is what's what's mm-hmm. kind of hurting them, but do you think that the the and expansion I, is a, oh, go ahead Blake. No, 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 no. I I last thing I was going to say is I just think losing them to the SEC look, you you got beat 65 to 7 last year in the national championship game. Mm-hmm. And you want me to take you serious as a conference? I I'm sorry, I can't. I, I, I just, I can't. You, you well, got, you got absolutely annihilated. And and, and Oklahoma hasn't stage. really done much getting there either. They're they're really the only other team that's been been competitive. They they got blown out once against LSU, but other than that, at yep. least they at least they were able to stick it close. Um, you know, other than that, I mean, it's just it it, it, it uh, yeah, it hasn't really been a good look. I mean, other other than Oklahoma, who has come out of the Big Twelve showing that they we're going to be competitive uh, and who's, who's going to step up, but adding these four teams, do you think it's enough to kind of help that, that conference stay afloat? Yes. And no, honestly, like you guys have covered the best. And that was the big key thing I was going to say. You get, you lose losing Oklahoma and losing Texas. You're two big key marketing teams. Like they bring in the most viewers. They bring in the most profit. They bring in the most everything for the conference. Like, yeah, I understand bringing in these teams, they're gonna obviously have big spots to fill, but like, you're, what more can you say about replacing Oklahoma and Texas? Like, mm-hmm. you're definitely gonna ratings are definitely gonna be cha- fluctuating to say the least for for not mm-hmm. seeing Oklahoma and Texas on. It's gonna be a, like it's not gonna be monumental, but it's gonna be a definite big a big decrease for this, just because obviously a lot of people showed up to watch Texas and Oklahoma play, but I mean eventually. Will they get the viewership back? Maybe, but I, I as much as I would love to say yes, but it's definitely gonna take a long, long road for them to finally get find that level factor and maybe get it back. But I, it's nice to see these teams come into the Big Twelve, but it's definitely not what it's gonna be like when Oklahoma and Texas leave. To say yeah. at least. And and here's here's my only best case scenario for the Big 12 um, because ultimately I think with all the conference realignment I think it's kind of going down a dangerous road where we're not going to have the conferences that we once knew and everything and yeah. it's really just going to be two different conferences and I think you're going to have to shorten up the amount of teams that are playing for the one title so ultimately that's what I think it's going to turn into be yeah. it's going to be you know basically the Big 10 and the SEC um, but they're going to be called something yeah. different is what, what I think we're leading into uh, and the best case for the Big 12, while we still have the conference alignment the way it is right now, is I'm looking at the new teams they're bringing in. I think BYU has a little bit of a chance to be kind of what Oklahoma State's been. Uh, and then I also think, uh, you know, with Cincinnati, I feel like they're going to turn into a Kansas. Uh, I'm, I'm not really high on on Cincinnati and their, their, their higher um, 
they hired Satterfield, right? Yep. So uh, just yep. I'm, I'm not super big on, on that hire. I don't think Cincinnati is going to be back to what we saw Cincinnati with Luke Fickle. So mm-hmm. looking looking at the others, uh, UCF with G- Gus Mazan. Gus Mazan has, has coached in the, in the Power Five. He's coached with the big programs. He's coached in the big games. I think Gus, Gus Mazan stands a chance to bring UCF now that they are they have that power five title on them they have a chance to go and get some big time recruits and not only that but let's think about where UCF is located they're located in a very good position so looking at where they're at being down in Florida a huge draw very very easy to get a, a kid to come down to Florida and enjoy I believe they're in Orlando right yeah so yep that's that's a really big big place to be a great place to be mm-hmm. and you've got a good coach to help you help you recruit now can your your can your front offices uh you know your 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 athletic director and all that can they also uh transition into this power five setting that's kind of where where, you, where i stand with ucf i also think houston i think they're in a really good really good position i think ge- geographically they, they fit in really well there uh, and they've got a lot of kids they can go and get there in texas alone so houston now stamping that power five stamp on their program i think can be really big so those two programs they the best case scenario is that those two programs succeed really well with that that power five stamp and start to become relevant and make that conference tougher and make that conference worth worth putting you know putting up a fight against um so yeah no i don't think they're going to come out and compete with the sec or the big 10 Overall, when you look at teams like Alabama, LSU, Georgia, uh, and and you know even looking over uh, at, at the Big Ten and seeing Ohio State and Michigan and and uh, what Michigan I think can piece back together, uh, and and and, uh, and and looking over at Penn State, you know everything that that the, I think Wisconsin is also another team that's going to be uh, on the uh, upslope here with Luke Fickle coming at the at the helm. So. I don't think they're going to compete with those two conferences, but I think they can compete with the ACC. I think they can compete. I, I, I definitely think they can compete with the Pac-12. So easily, oh, I think absolutely. I think the Big Twelve is in a really good position for where we're at overall. But ultimately, we're going to break it into to a smaller smaller league, uh, broken into two yeah. two pieces. Absolutely. So. 100%. Let's jump on to the last thing, and it is a dark horse. I want to hear if you guys have any dark horses or if you just think it's going to be uh, – maybe you don't have a dark horse at all in the Big 12. Maybe you just think, no, screw it, I'm, I'm going with, with the big one. But do you guys have a dark horse that could step up and maybe be that Big 12? Because we think about last year, Kansas State was absolutely a dark horse in my opinion. I don't think anybody saw Kansas State going in there and winning as much as they did and getting to the Big 12 championship. Uh, TCU is really it was a, it was a, a a whole Big Twelve championship of dark horses because TCU wasn't either. Mm-hmm. So uh, last year we saw the dark horses really step up last year and yeah. and do something. Do you guys have a dark horse for the Big Twelve? Uh, we'll start off with you, Jeremy. I do. I have the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. I like it. Yeah, and I think I think I think we can put them in the dark horse category. Even though I think some more people are starting to pick them, I think we can put them in, the, in that category mm-hmm. because. When you look at what they had last year and going into this season, I like the Red Raiders a lot. Like you look at this team, they haven't won or uh, play for a conference championship since two thousand and eight. Yes, and you know who they played against? Boomer Sooner of Oklahoma. Yep. Like you get these guys; they've been down in the slumps and just been trying to dogfight and scratch their way out of this. Like it's just so hard for Texas Tech. Like, you look at all these other teams, they can come in and just completely, completely roll. And I I honestly think Texas, this maybe, if not this year, or even though I'm kind of thinking it might be, if not next year, because I know, I think they have a strong recruiting class as well. And they can easily become a dark horse team, in my opinion. Yeah, I like it. Blake, do you have a dark horse for the Big 12? Mine's the same one as Texas Tech. Uh, I'm, I'm going to roll with the Red Raiders. Um, their schedule is a little tough, but uh, they, they've they got some playmakers. Their defense uh, is – if it grows from what it did last year, uh, I, I think their de- – yeah, I think their defense could really carry them. Uh, we know that they got some playmakers and, and they can put points on the board. 
uh, and how quickly they can do that. Mm -hmm. I think they could be, I'm not going to say they're going to be a TCU of last year, uh, but I think they could win some games and, and make a run to that Big 12 title game. Definitely. Yeah, I like your guys' pick, and that, that would have been mine. Um, but I'm, I'm trying to think outside the box, too, and, and going a little deeper in the bag. And I, I really look down through, and I, again, it's another team. I'm not sure if you really consider them a dark horse because I think they've been so good for so long. First off, with Texas Tech, I, I really believe in Joey McGuire. That's who I picked to big the, mm -hmm. win the Big 12 Definitely. originally. But reconsidering, I'm, I'm going to go with maybe an Oklahoma or Texas to come out on the last year. Um, but I do like Texas Tech a lot. I think I think they're going to be very tough this year. And Joey McGuire is a great coach. I think he's got what it takes to to help Texas Tech become one of the faces of the Big Twelve. I think they're I think they're going to end up with four four programs. Uh, I think the, the other two or you know or so are still waiting to be seen. But I think you're going to have your Oklahoma State uh, is obviously got to be your your big dog now and then. Uh, I, I think Texas Tech can be that that other one, and then you've kind of got two open slots, and who's going to step in and be it? Uh, and I think Baylor's in in that that contention, which leads me to believe that D Dave Aranda uh, and the Baylor Bears are my dark horse because I think Dave Aranda showed that he can piece this this team together to beat Oklahoma and uh, and and put together a really strong team and and go through and and, and win. Uh, to, to make it to the, the Big 12 title game and, and beat Oklahoma State two years ago. So looking at Baylor, I think they're a really good team with a really good coach. As much as I hate Dave Aranda for what he did to Oklahoma and the whole timeout just to kick an extra field goal crap, get out of here with that. Um, you know, I, I don't really have to have time for you to try to put a couple seconds back up on the clock after the whole team is already in the locker room. Yeah. But I have no respect for that, that dude as a, as a person, but he's a great coach. So uh, I, I do believe that, that Baylor Bears could be one of those dark horses that nobody's really talking about this year that could sneak in there and, and make it to the Big 12 championship game. Absolutely. Mm, good pick. Good pick. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much all. And, man, guys, we, we talked about the Big 12 longer than what I thought we would. I'm really glad that we broke this down <laughs> conference by conference and not trying to com combine a couple conferences together. Uh, that was a good suggestion by Blake. Yeah. But we had uh, a marathon if we did everything. Together. Absolutely. So, but guys, we, we thank you all so much for watching, for listening. Make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube, and go ahead and comment down below uh, who is your conference championship winner for the Big 12 this year. Uh, it was a lot of fun breaking down the Big 12 and jumping ahead and looking at what it's going to be. As an Oklahoma fan, I'm very excited for the Big 12 this year, seeing what what's going to come about with the Big 12 and how they're going to end up being after Oklahoma and Texas leave, but also can Oklahoma or Texas leave their footprint on the Big 12? If you're listening on Apple Podcast or Spotify, we ask that you give us a five-star review. That is a great way to help us out. So go ahead and do that. And you can also follow us on social media, on, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, wherever you can find us. Search for Rising to the Occasion and give us a little bit of a shout-out. Go ahead and share this with your friends, your family, whoever you think might enjoy the show. Guys, we thank you so much for your for your love and for your support. We have made it to over 3,000 subscribers. It feels like not long ago we were talking about the big uh, milestone making it to 2,000. We've been growing tremendously, uh, much faster than what we thought we could have. We've reached 7,000 on a view here a little while back. So I mean, 7,000 views on a on a video here a little while back. So I mean, just just crazy stuff. We thank you all so much for your support. Uh, we can't wait for college football season to bring you guys more content. And until next time.